This is not King Kong. Instead, this is Attacking Primate Monster, better known as APE. This movie is seldom talked about, but it is well known by Kaiju and Ken Kong fans. Surprisingly, not many people have talked about it on YouTube, or even heard of it. So, we decided to launch our investigation. But before we begin, I am Detective Mio. And I am Inspector Kido. Let's take a look at Behind the Scenes. This movie, by all definitions, is a cash grab. It began production in 1976, and it came out the same year, which is also the same year that Jeff Bridges' King Kong movie came out. The goal of Ape was to capitalize on the inevitable success of King Kong by making a shoddy ripoff that would only cost them a roughly $23,000. It would only take two weeks to finish shooting. The director was Paul Letter, who is also known for making the movie I Dismember Mother, a movie about a killer sex pervert. Quite the filmography. Ape is a movie that is an American career in collaboration, but I have yet to figure out why a good portion of the cast and the majority of the crew is Korean, so there's a lot of questions to be asked. In the middle of production, there was some advertising confusion, namely Ape being advertised as the new King Kong movie in a magazine. RKO, the distributors of King Kong, were none too happy about this and filed a lawsuit against Ape. So the film changed its name to Super Ape, and later to A.P.E., in an attempt to appeal to the M.A.S.H. MASH fans, I guess. The movie would have the tagline, not to be confused with KING KONG! Slightly deceptive, but whatever. In the future, Ape would have other names like Hideous Mutant and Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla. In international theaters, though, it was called King Kong Returns and Super King Kong, and somehow legal action was never taken. The most notable actor slash actress in this film is Joanna Kearns, who is most known for the show Growing Pains. APE has a lot of questionable posters, but the most common one features him fighting a giant shark and a giant snake. Bear that in mind for later. It's very hard to find really in-depth information on this movie, so I guess we shall just dive into the movie itself. Strap in, it's gonna be a wild ride. The movie Ape opens with a toy boat in the middle of a very black ocean. The captain of the boat has himself a little smoke, and this guy, I don't know what his rank is, joins him. They share a casual chat about the nearly 36 foot beast that they're transporting, and we learn that the creature is to be paraded around the world like King Kong or something. Hopefully, the sedatives last that long. The captain is surprisingly soft spoken, and this guy talks like he sampled some of them sedatives the beast had. Were you there in Ireland when they caught him? Yeah, sure was. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. He's something to see, I tell you. I know. Imagine. Almost 36 feet tall. Wow. But not long after, maybe like 30 seconds, much to the chagrin of the passengers on the boats, the sedatives do not last very long, and the true star of the film busts his way out of the ship, presumably killing everyone on board. Oh yeah, they're atomized. They're dead, Jim. And now it's time to get the first look of the creature of the feature, and oh my gosh, it's a man in a trash bag. It's very dark, but we'll talk about the cinematography later. The design of this creature is very... lumpy. It's an ape costume. Uh, it's an ape costume. Hey, you remember that shark on the poster? Well, it's time for a monster fight. The beast, which for now on we're just gonna call Ape, splashes around and thrashes around with the shark. And eventually it kills the shark by drowning it, maybe. I don't know, it's quite possible the shark was already dead. The fight also lasts way too long. Boring, boring. After all that scufflage, Ape makes his way over to land and starts destroying stuff for three, three and a half minutes. It's very riveting stuff. Like, I gotta tell you, I was fully invested into the scene that I could barely see. Yes, I, I can't see. There's something's happened to my eyes. I, 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 I can't see. Now we meet the main human characters. There's Marilyn Baker, an actress with the personality of a potato, who's visiting the Orient. This is my first visit to the Orient. For the first time. <laughs> Are we still allowed to say that? And Tom Rose, her extra horny kind of sort of boyfriend. It's time to stop! He's also a reporter. The creature briefly appears again. Then we meet the Korean Captain Kim and his family as well as Colonel Davis. He likes to a smoke and a cuss. And then we see the destruction caused by Ape! <laughs> Could they have made this scene just a smidge longer? I mean, I wasn't fully able to absorb the singular panning shot repeated several times. The next appearance of Ape 
rape happens when these kids, for some reason, break into a playground. I have no idea what the scene accomplishes because Ape appears and the kids just run away. I'm also not sure why they broke into a playground because then the teacher pops up and is like, no, kids don't do that. But what are they doing there in the first place where they're supposed to be in school? I'm not really sure. As we see later, there's a lot of long and unnecessary scenes. This is because, after the film was originally filmed, the director thought the movie was too short and too serious. So, they padded out the runtime to be longer and more campy. The whole, it's supposed to be campy, sounds like cope to me. And even as a supposed campy parody monster movie, it's just not good. But back to the film. Colonel, my office has already received at least a dozen calls from perfectly reliable sources and... <laughs> Oh, excuse me just one second, Captain. The human interactions in this movie are surprisingly inhuman and boring. So at least it's consistent with the monster parts. But it's time to spice things up. Remember that giant snake on the poster? Time for another monster fight. Ape removes the snake from a tree and tosses it at the camera, killing the cameraman. Then the snake leaves. Wow. Oh my gosh, there's so much kaiju action in this movie, it's insane. Later, Ape interrupts a martial arts movie being filmed, and a very much dubbed Korean man alerts everyone of his presence. Hey, look! Then everyone transforms into repeating footage and starts shooting flaming arrows at the Ape! <laughs> And these guys prepare to ram the log up the apes' butt! <laughs> and, then, and, then we, <laughs> and then we cut away, and we don't know what happens next. This basically happens all the time. Top 10 pictures taken before disaster struck. What was that even about? Is that some of the padded out footage that they were talking about? Who knows? Colonel Davis and Captain Kim try to convince some reporters, including Courtney Tom, but it doesn't go over very well. Apparently Tom and Captain Kim are friends, so Tom's gonna get the inside scoop on Ape! If I don't catch this ape, I'll probably be sweeping the streets instead. If I don't get a story, I'll be uh, selling magazines door to door. <laughs> but first, Tom's gonna visit Marilyn to warn her about the creature. Marilyn is currently filming a scene for her new movie. The scene is questionable to say the least. You slum. One more time. Come on. One more time, you bitch. No, no. Oh, I can't tell if this movie's trying to be meta with the bad acting or if it's just how it turned out. Tom finally arrives to warn Marilyn. I mean, you're taking a chance being out here on location. I mean, that thing. King Kong? Ah, 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 you can't say that! You can't say that! He and Marilyn make out for 40 seconds, which is far, far too long. And it's Marilyn who decides to keep making her weird movie and hope for the best or something. What's happened, sir? The ape snuffed out another village. Well, that's pretty concerning, I think. For all American civilian personnel to be evacuated to Seoul immediately. Why not evacuate everyone? Maybe he doesn't have the ability to tell the Korean people what to do. Or maybe he's racist. Luckily, everyone, Koreans included, sought to evacuate to Seoul. Many riveting scenes of people getting into vehicles, and then out of vehicles, and then back in the vehicles, and driving away. No! No! And those scenes were some of the worst VFX in history. They didn't even try. Okay, this, this evacuation is taking a little bit too much time of the movie, I would say. Holy! The jump scare of a lifetime! Whilst this is happening, Captain Kim and Tom are looking for the creature, but somehow they haven't been able to find it yet. Turns out that Ape has managed to evade everyone's eyes and is currently watching yet another raunchy scene be filmed. I don't even think that's raunchy, I think this is No, no, no. It has to be advertiser friendly. It's grapey. While running away from her fictional attacker and out of the line of sight of the camera that's shooting this scene, Marilyn literally runs into the ape's awaiting hand. This scene, to this day, just confuses me. Hey! Hey, you got Marilyn! He's got Marilyn! He's got 
got Maryland! He's got Maryland! For reasons unknown, the Korean army headquarters once ape captured alive, which certainly complicates matters. You know, I just realized that ape walks around bent over because they tried to make him look more like a gorilla. Previous to this point, I thought that the suit actor just had like really bad back pain, but I guess that was supposed to be intentional. Or he just had bad back pain. Let's get following him. I'll hang on here. Back with ape in Maryland. Oh my God, what's happening? All things considered, the woman's taking it pretty well. You channel things. Maybe too well, weird. Luckily, Marilyn remembers that her loyalties lie with the human race, and she flees to the cave as soon as Abe sets her down to swat some helicopters. It's a bit confusing where he set her down, where the cave is. Oh, jeez. It's a bit confusing why he set her down, where the cave is, and how big the cave is, but with a budget of $23,000, consistency is a bit of a luxury around here. Abe reaches in to get her, and she starts screaming again in her desperate attempt to give the audience a headache. And believe you me, it's working! Tom and Captain Kim arrive in an indeterminate location nearby. Tom wants to go charging in gung-ho, but the actor for Kim struggles to remember and recite his lines to convince him to hold back. What are we gonna do? Wait? Wait! My god, Kim, he's gonna kill her! Well, calm down, my friend. What else can he do? The reinforcement should be here any minute. If he tried to do anything now, he'll crush us like ants. Honestly, good show to this man. English is clearly not his first language. I wouldn't call it acting, though. Ape stops his attempts to reclaim Marilyn because he's distracted by soldiers parachuting out of some planes. The ape begins his intimidation display, which is in this case, <laughs> which is in this case a dance party. I don't know what else you would call this. Tom insists that he can go in when the soldiers have drawn Ape away, and Captain Kim, for some reason, agrees and gives him the jeep, telling him to go to his house in Seoul. If they get out alive! Another overly long action sequence begins. The helicopters and planes start shooting at Ape! And ground soldiers start throwing gas grenades at Ape. Ape! And the monster starts thrashing around. These events repeat multiple times for a while. Eventually he takes down one of the helicopters and the woman starts screaming again. <laughs> we then get treated to a long sustained shot of Tom crossing a grassy field to get to Marilyn. At least 20 seconds worth. Tom then grabs Marilyn and goes exactly back the way he just came. This time taking just under 30 seconds. This must be the padding that they were referring to. I have no words. Actually, I have two. It sucks. The two run to the jeep and drive off to go to Captain Kim's house. The military continues to bother Ape, and he knocks down another helicopter to the ground. Then, one of the most iconic moments in cinema occurs as knockoff King Kong flips the bird at the camera. This is basically the director's way of saying, ha ha suckers, this is not a King Kong movie. I took your money and I'm stealing it and I'm getting away with it. The lovely couple drive back to Saul, and the dialogue from real humans was totally recorded on location. Take it easy, Tom. Somehow I felt more safe with the ape than I do with your driving. I'll take you back then. No, that's all right. I'd rather be in Seoul. Huh? This is intercut with Colonel Davis getting angry over the phone. The government wants him to try to capture the ape alive one more time. Tom and Marilyn arrive at Kim's house, and she's kind of bummed that they want to capture Ape because he's actually sort of chill, and he doesn't deserve to be put in a cage or killed, despite killing multiple people himself, maybe. Her boyfriend's just like, it is what it is. Get out the car. And then they enter Kim's house. Mrs. Kim entertains the children with a random puppet, but takes a short break to welcome the guests. But Tom bounces pretty quickly to get back out there and wrangle up a scoop, meeting up with Captain Kim. Ape begins attacking Saul, and people flee in terror. Then, Ape, looking for his blonde beauté, starts smashing buildings with innocent occupants. These scenes are actually pretty funny, but they last way too long. And they go on and off for around like seven minutes. Literally, they're just there to increase the runtime because the suit actor moves so slowly. The ape smashes his way towards Kim's house, and somehow both Marilyn and Mrs. Kim don't hear the impending doom approaching. Probably because they're too busy entertaining the little kitties. And those kids are really, really, really entertained. They're laughing and a carrying on like this is the best thing ever. <laughs> the puppet moved his legs and danced around. Funniest crap I ever saw. That fun is brought to an abrupt end when does a big old roar, causing the two women and the children to flee to the bedroom. But somewhere between the living room and the bedroom, the children just disappear to thin air. And it's never addressed. Ape smashes into the house. 
And Melon runs back into the awaiting ape hand, leaving Mrs. Kim convulsing on the ground in a burning house. <laughs> the firemen come running to the scene in a very plot-relevant, riveting sequence, and we never learn what happens to Mrs. Kim or the kids, or the puppet. They might be just fine, or they may have burned to death, who knows. But I guess at this point they were running a little too long in the runtime, so they had to start cutting scenes of importance. Colonel Davis finally gets the go-ahead to kill the ape! So we get another long sequence, this time with the military preparing for some monkey hunting. Helicopters and foot soldiers start charging and shooting ape! And he just tanks it like a champ. He's just kind of shaking back and forth. Dancing, maybe. It wouldn't be the first time. But he realizes it's almost the part of the movie for him to die. So he puts down the girl so that she can be safe. Even with all those weapons being fired in their direction, and it's pretty likely that she'll get hit with a rogue something or other. Rocket bomb, who knows? <laughs> Either way, she runs off and ape retreats up the mountain. Soldiers and repeat footage creep up after him. I started blasting. Bam! In response, he starts throwing rocks with some really janky special effects, and what I can only assume is a Donkey Kong reference. Marilyn somehow finds Tom and runs into his arms, and they just keep shooting at the monkey until he starts dying. Let's see him dance for his organ grinder now! What do you mean by that? We had to look up what an organ grinder was to understand with that reference, and I'm glad to say that it's nothing weird. It's just a reference to a regular monkey thing. <laughs> Starts to slow down and sink to the ground, which I guess means he's dying. Marilyn is upset by this, and she asks why he had to die. Oh, boy. Boy. But why? Tom responds with a stolen line. It's just too big for a small world like ours. Then we cut back to Ape, and he's dead. <laughs> the end. That's it, not even a fade to black, it's over. Well, Inspector Keto, what are your thoughts on the movie? Well, I would say that Ape is a bad movie, and not really in a fun way. Parts are unintentionally hilarious, but it's incredibly slow and very poorly paced. The best single word to describe the movie would be boring. The movie fails as a serious film, or as a parody, even though I think they just added that to cover their butts, but a parody needs to be an exaggerated imitation in order to be funny. This movie is just a bad ripoff of King Kong. What was your favorite character? I don't know. What was your favorite moment in the film? I don't know. Maybe when he flipped the finger. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you seen this movie, and did you enjoy it, or did you hate it? Ah oh, yes, the score. We'll give it one Fleming error out of ten. We're checking out a new style of videos in this episode, so let us know what you think. Do you like the more humorous approach, or do you want us to dial it back a little bit? Or we could just make it depend on whatever movie we're covering. Your feedback is appreciated, but subscribe for future investigations and our other videos. And like the video if you liked it. And if you want to see another video, click this one over here. Or this one over here. Until we see you there, he's Mia. And he's Keto. And we hope that you have a blessed day. Bye! Bye. Apparently Tom and Captain Kim are friends, so Tom's going to get inside the <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Tom <laughs> Apparently Tom and Captain Kim are friends, so Tom's gonna <laughs> <laughs> Wow.